If you open up any website requirements list, there's a specific requirement that you won't be able to avoid. And that one is that the website has to be responsive. Now, according to W3Schools, responsive web design is about using HTML and CSS to automatically resize, hide, shrink, or enlarge a website to make it look good on all devices, being it desktops, tablets, or phones. But now you might be wondering, and why is this important? Well, let me show you that according to website traffic data, over 50% of the global web traffic comes from mobile users. Whereas 10 years ago, this was just shy of 4%, so that's a major increase. So naturally, due to this rise in the usage of handheld devices, it became more and more important that websites were still functional and pleasant to the eye on all different screen sizes. Hence the surge in popularity of responsive web design. Now, responsive web design is usually done by writing CSS media queries to cater to the needs of specific screen sizes. But this process is long, tedious, and kind of hard to maintain. Now, the tailing CSS framework really simplified the process for us by encapsulating all the necessary media queries into easy to use utility classes variants that you can put directly in your markdown file. Now, let's see how we can turn our previous tailing CSS project which is not incredibly responsive and make it look good on all devices with just a couple editions of Tailwind CSS variants. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding tutorials every week just like the one that you're about to watch, so if you enjoyed that, please drop a like down below on this video to help out the channel. Now, taking a quick look at the Tailwind CSS website, you can go into the documentation and on the left, search for responsive design. Then you're going to take a quick look on how it works. So the way it works is that every class in Tailwind can be applied conditionally at different breakpoints. This is the part that it's important, which is conditionally. So by default, it has five breakpoints that you can identify with SM, MD, LG, XL, and 2XL. These breakpoints relate to the minimum width of the screen of the relative pixels. This then translates into media queries like the ones that you're probably used to see. Now, all of these widths in pixels are customizable. Tailwind allows you to customize everything about it, but that's going to be for another video. For now, we're going to use the default values that we have right here. So the way to use this is just to prefix any class that you want with the breakpoint size that you need, semicolon, and the class you want to apply at that breakpoint, which means that in this case, in all device sizes until the MD breakpoint, which is 768 pixels. Until that, this class is going to have a width of 16 rams. At that point, it's going to have a width of 32. And when it reaches the LG breakpoint, which is 1024 pixels, it's going to apply the 48 rem class. This is simply how it works. Another point to notice is that Tailwind works mobile first. So when you're targeting mobile screens, you shouldn't target the SM class. That's not how it works. You're not applying the class to say at this screen size, at the small screen size, draw text center. You're just drawing. At this breakpoint, apply this. So the way recommended to use it's first write your mobile first classes. And then if you want to target specific, breakpoints, you enter the class that you want. Okay, so now for just a quick recap, this is what we had before. This is our index page, which is the page that you're watching right here. And what we have is our hero section on the top. Then we have a section with the cards that are also other components. And then we have a footer down below. So let's start with the hero section. Although it's not really bad on mobile, it is a bit big on the text. If you go to a smaller screen size like the iPhone SE, you see that it's quite obnoxious. So let's try and make this work. The header can stay the same. That's fine. When we get to the H1, you can see that we have here a text 5XL, which is quite large. So what we want to say is only use this text at the MD breakpoint and afterwards. So since this is a mobile first approach, we can put here a class without the breakpoint selector to be applied as default, basically. You can make this like Excel. How does this look? I think it looks quite small. Let's do it to Excel. Or three. 
yeah, two is better. The same thing is going to apply for the H2 down here. We have by default a 2XL on text font. So we're going to say that this one also applies only on the medium. And by default, it's going to be text. LG probably. Got so smaller, it even jumped. G, let's make it medium. I like this one the best. Okay, we should add some padding in the X axis. We forgot to add that before. Let's do padding X of two. And now it looks better. Okay, for the button, it's gonna be the same thing. The button is defined by this anchor tag and by default, it has padding of four. So you only want that padding also on bigger screen sizes, starting at six, starting at seven, six, eight pixels. So when it's smaller than that, we just want to add padding two. Then our text, and then our button got smaller, but our text is still large. So let's also change the text size. Okay, so our button doesn't have a font size, so it's getting the default. Let's place it a text small on smaller devices. And then on MD, let's make text to Excel. And now I think the page is starting to look better. So I think this section is looking better. Okay, let's go back to our next section, which are the cards. This one is going to be a bit tricky. Let's start with the H3, which is extremely large. Say that the text is only going to be 5XL on medium breakpoint. And by default, it's going to be 2XL. And it already looks better. Now, this is going to be the tricky part and the most interesting one. You see that I have a row here of cards and then another row here. It's defined right here. And this is going to work exactly the same way. So both of them are being displayed flex and with display row. But the thing is, I only want it to be on a row when it's MD. So when it's not, I'm going to apply before the flex column. So now they're going to be arranged in columns. These two are done. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom row. The row is going to be conditional to the medium breakpoint. And by default, it's going to be a column. Okay, now going into each individual card, it's going to be the same process. So you can see that here I have a fixed width of a third. Just I only want that on medium devices. By default, I don't have nothing. That takes care of that. You can see that it's extremely long to the right of the screen. That's because of the footer. The footer is breaking everything. We're going to take care of that later. Okay, the next part that we want is to make our image smaller. So the, the width we had before and the height are going to be conditional. And by default, they're going to be like 16. The same thing for the height for the width with 16. Okay, now they're smaller. At the same time, I want my items instead of being in a row, but this is now a, a personal preference. But instead of being in a row, I'm going to do the same thing with it after before. And the default is going to be in column and then in medium is going to be a row. So if I save this, now our image is on the top. And we're going to also center our text. So in this div right here, we can, we can keep that, keep that and add a text center class. So our text is going to be center, but this is going to break on the medium because it's going to apply all this class to all breakpoints. So we're going to say that on medium, I want text to be like it was before, which was left. Okay. Now we can also play with the text sizes, medium is going to be a large and all others are going to be normal. In this case, medium is going to be base and normal is going to be small. Looking good. Now the footer, which is the one that's breaking everything. So let's go into our footer component. Now I just restarted my browser, my responsive Safari and everything snapped into place. And the only thing we have left is our footer. And we're going to do the same thing. If by default, you only apply flex is going to apply the row for the flex. 
let's say that on MD we want that to be a row, so we're gonna force the row to stay. But by default, we actually want a column for our footer. So now you can see everything is based out on columns. But we're missing a padding or something like that. Let's add the padding first. So in each of these divs that we have, we're gonna say that we will have a margin bottom of three. But if your medium just don't have a margin bottom, let's place it you to zero. We're gonna copy the code we did here, place it on the other div that we have. And one more. Okay, so now we have some kind of separation between them. And if you go back to medium breakpoints, we won't have any spacings. Actually, let's bump up this margin bottom. Let's make it five. Yeah, that's looking better. Now I'm also going to want to make the text center by default, but on MD, I want the text to stay left. I think that all we have left is this input right here in the button, which says outside of the rendering support. And that's going to be exactly the same thing. This is a div which has the input and the button. It is a flex row on medium, but by default on screen sizes, we want it to be a flex call. So if we hit save, already looking better. Now on the input, we have a margin right. That was the spacing between the button, but now we only want it on medium because it's where it's going to be on a row. So if we save this, it's already on the same size. And the last thing we want is to have a margin bottom of two but on medium, make it zero because you're going to be on the same row. And there you have it. So this is our finished piece, a responsive design. Kind of looks good on mobile. You can also check other mobile sizes. So an iPhone 8 plus still looking good. Then on the iPad, it reverts back to a medium screen size. Also looking great. Then iPad Pro and all desktop sizes. And this was our first introduction to responsive web design with Tailwind CSS. Now on a future video, we'll take a look on how Tailwind lets you customize every aspect of the framework to fit your brand needs from the default colors, text sizes, also the breakpoints. So if you're interested in that and more coding related tutorials, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below to the channel so that you won't miss anything. And with all this being said, all that I can wish you now is happy coding and I'll see you on the next one.